All right, everybody, we continue here at what has been an absolutely fascinating and entertaining Moto America Superbike Speed Fest at Monterey at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. Absolutely stunning day. Uh, weather is phenomenal at this stage. It's warmed up. It's beautiful out there. And the racing has been uh, entertaining and intense to, to boot here. So uh, we've been really looking forward to what's unfolding. Uh, one of the things that I'm loving about this is today we get a double dose as well of super hooligans uh, we had the b main for the roland sands design mission food super hooligan national championships this morning they put on a show uh the 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 a main if you will is coming up here uh this afternoon they were spectacular yesterday roland i think we're in for another treat fierce fight between jeremy mcwilliams and andy debrino came down the last lap and the last corner and uh you know these guys are side by side scrapping there's some of the highlights here. Look at that start by the 137 on the Energica e-bike uh, from Mesa. Let down into that turn. Just still doesn't quite have the pace. And first, Jeremy McWilliams, the pole sitter, able to sneak back by uh, Tyler O'Hara coming through as well. And uh, then Andy Debrina was going to make the move. And those three started uh, really putting on an absolutely spectacular show. Stefano Mesa tried to stay there. Then we had Mallory Dobbs had an off. And then an absolutely bizarre off right there by A.J. Peasley. And uh, he was shaken up, but okay. But it did bring out the red flag on the restart. Again, you can see the Energica getting a great start, leaping up briefly into the third spot. But this is when the battling got absolutely fierce. Uh, and you can see Larry Pegram there. But up front, McWilliams, and then uh, there's Tyler. And a little bobble right there. Obviously, that led Andy Debrino through. And then it got serious. <laughs> the, the, you could see that KTM's got some agility. Almost able to get it up the inside. Jeremy taking the inside line, blocking with Andy trying to come around the outside. Jeremy having a big slide at the exit of the corner. And Jeremy with his head down, able to maintain the lead across the start finish line. Just a fantastic race and his first official race win after being disqualified at the ridge. Yeah, that meant a lot to him. He was absolutely determined. And uh, it was interesting, too, wasn't it? It was a study of horsepower versus agility. And out of that last turn, even with that little bobble, he had enough grunt uh, to be able to pull it off. And as a result now, with Tyler having an issue, 86 points, he's still in the lead. But now Jeremy only five behind him. And only 12 behind him is Andy Debrino. This top three is really heating up. Well, you know that with this race, we have two more after this at Coda, which will be yep. the next round for Super Hooligan races. So there's some opportunity for the uh, for Jeremy to make up a little bit more points on Tyler, as well as Andy Debrino to get in the mix for this championship lead. And then, of course, Corey West there in fourth, Mark Price in fifth, Bobby Fong just outside of that top five and not running here this weekend as he's focusing on Superbike and, of course, on the uh, baggers. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that really entertaining B-Main race. Uh, and the pole sitter actually was not there. And so the 104 of Condon got an absolutely uh, superb start launched out there, as a matter of fact. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it was just going to get boring here as these guys got really serious and uh, some of the pace they were showing was absolutely phenomenal out there uh, the Guardo brothers having a heck of a run and a battle as well swapping spots out there uh, but then uh, the uh, comeback through the field but first of all the 918 uh, was absolutely hooked up and booking right there uh, the 518 I mean uh, but wall that they got into this absolutely phenomenal back and forth and a 104 of Condit was showing some really good speed uh, but uh, it's the back at the front on this one was superb. You know, we're watching a couple air cool bikes with the FTR 1200. It's definitely a lot of different bikes on the track, and we saw you could see uh, Sean Guadardo actually. Oh, and, and that was the crash from Conduit, and you can see his crashing skills um, coming into play there, putting his hands close to his chest. Always the best way to avoid a hand injury. Yeah, I mean, he did a remarkable job of, uh, of hanging right in there and not having any kind of, uh, of damage there. You see Sean coming, know, coming around the outside. He was on a Sportster, a stock 1200 right? okay. Sportster versus a Harley Pan America. Yeah, that was just remarkable. I mean, big horsepower disparity there. Yeah. And we saw Sean take advantage of that. And still coming through. All right, let's get down to Michael Hill. 
Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, down here on the grid, they have let us on the grid. It's a quick start procedure, so we don't have time to do a walk and talk. But just across here is Jeremy McWilliams. Uh, he wants to make it a double. He will start from pole position alongside him, Andy Debrino. We spoke to him during Mike on the mic, and he's having so much fun on that KTM. Uh, we saw a last lap fight between these two yesterday. What are we going to see today? And then, of course, completing the front row is Tyler O'Hara. But just look, uh, just a little bit further back, that uh, turquoise, the 137, that is Stefano Mesa, the first ever electric bike to lead a motorcycle race uh, where we mix the categories up and mix the, uh, the different uh, motorcycles up. Can Stefano Mesa make it two races and two starts and lead this second race? Eight laps ahead of us, we're being told to clear the grid. Back to you upstairs, this is going to be a cracker. It is, based on everything we've seen so far. And uh, this category of racing, I just love it. Uh, one, to me, it's really evocative because the bikes just look cool. You know, the higher bars and, and everything, and you get to get out there. But it's a category where pretty much whatever kind of bike you have, uh, there's probably a place in Super Hooligans for you to be able to run. And that's what makes this so challenging. You know, uh, the, uh, the lightweight speed of the KTM, the power of the other bikes, uh, it really is a great mix here. And uh, you can see the 99 there, McWilliams, from that pole position. Uh, he was he was really impressive in qualifying. He was not to be denied and pulled it off in the race as well. And uh, But it didn't come easy. We don't expect it to be easy here either. And uh, we're looking for this. They have one warm-up lap to go. And uh, then uh, we will be ready to go racing. Eight laps scheduled for the second A main, if you will, for these bikes. And there they go. Mission Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. Well, we talked about it here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Sega, the capital improvements. It includes a freshly repaved track. That doesn't change any of the challenges of this layout. Uh, you've got that uh, run down into the Andretti hairpin, turn two. Uh, that infield section down on the dry leg bed, turn three, four. More, the most important turn on the track, possibly turn five. It launches you up that long climb to the corkscrew, which you've got to negotiate turn six with the compression at the apex, very angular corner. And then the legendary uh, corkscrew falling off the edge of the cliff, down through rainy curve, really quick turn 10, and then the best overtaking area on the track down into turn 11. Uh, this is going to be absolutely spectacular. And we've seen these guys make passes where uh, you would expect passes to be made. Some of them have been making passes where you'd never expect passes to be made. And that's part of the entertainment here. I mean, you got two great, pa well, really three great passing corners here in turn two, rolling in the corkscrew in turn 11 as well. And the corkscrew, the most dramatic place you could yes. ever pass anybody. Oh, without a doubt. Here's I mean, a look at our starting grid. Mick Williams getting the win yesterday. Andy Debrino second yesterday, and Tyler O'Hara there as well, Larry Pegram. And we hadn't, didn't see Larry Pegram on the uh, outlap, on the warm-up lap. We'll follow up on that. Corey West, Stefano Mesa on the e-bike. A.J. Peasley adding that big off yesterday. Kyle Onsorg uh, and uh, Mark Price. We're getting a report that Kyle is having some issues there on the number five. Mallory Dobbs uh, uh, having a really impressive run till her off yesterday and looking forward to that Shalina Moreta ended up with a really strong finish up in the ninth spot in the top 10 Jordan Eubanks coming up through B main qualifying Hawk Mazzotta as well uh, Chris Joffrey and Kenyon Cluj on another of the e-bikes out there Danny Dominguez Paul Mitchell Brandon Quaid and Josh Nichols and uh, then Devin McLaughlin and Jesse Davis coming up through uh, the B qualifying category as well so we're getting a report. There is Pegram's bike on the stand, down in the pits. Unbelievable. But it's time to go racing here. The lights are on. Wait for it. We're green. Looked like a great start by Debrino. See if he's able to do anything. And here comes the final Mason once again. Nose to head for a second. Can he hang on to it and lead a race for the second straight day? No, as McWilliams sort of shuts the door right there. And Debrino trying to work the outside right now of Mesa. Does he get that down? He does the drive out and now Mesa trying to fight back up oh, around that's Corey, the outside. That's Corey West that's of Corey the inside. That's Corey West. What a start he got. 
Thanks for that catch. Yeah, that was Corey. Man, you know, Debrino got a great launch, but Corey coming up, splitting a couple of riders and getting right up into that. Speaking of Andy Debrino, he didn't look like he got the best start. No, he didn't. But you can see the top five bunched up a little bit. Jeremy is uh, going to try and repeat yesterday and uh, see if he can maybe get out a little bit and get away from these guys. But Corey West looks like he's not going to let that happen. No, he's looking pretty aggressive right now. And uh, Tyler O'Hare now has been able to work his way around Stefano Mesa up into the fourth spot. And I think that was Debrino now trying to come back up. Yep. And now gets up and into the uh, Fourth spot here with Stefano right there on the e-bike sitting in that fifth position right now. A little bit warmer today. We've talked about that can take a toll on the battery life, the energy as they talk about it. Not fuel, but energy in those electric bikes. And so Stefano may have to be in a little bit more of a management mode today. Uh, but these four bikes up front, uh, they're going to go at it hammer and tong. And uh, this is going to be interesting. But again, McWilliams, he is he's so fired up after what happened at the Ridge. Obviously, he feels wronged. And he wants to get after it. And look at that move as Tyler O'Hara just powers by Corey West. Because uh, Tyler knows uh, what Jeremy's capable of and what Jeremy's intentions are. He does not want to let him go. No, you, you can't let Jeremy get out in front. I mean, once he builds a rhythm and he might stretch out a little gap, there's not a ton of laps in this race. It's, a, it's an eight-lap race. So you got to get it done in the first couple laps. Okay, let's take a look. Look at that 13 number plate, sort of middle of your screen on the right. And there you can see Debrino didn't look like he got a bad start. Then that front end came up, and that cooked him right there. That's where Stefano Mesa came through. But it was that outside move, wasn't it, by Corey West. Uh, he's the one that went up and ramped around the outside. What a great start. A shame we're missing, uh, missing Larry Pegram out of the mix there. I know. I know he was really pushing to get on the podium today on his Indian FTR 1200. What a shame that bike didn't make it out on the grid. Oh, look at Debrino now coming after Corey West. And Debrino into the braking zone for the carousel. West not wanting to give it to him, but oh. Debrino relentless around the outside. And we saw Debrino in the race yesterday, huge bravery into that corkscrew a number of times late in the race. So he's willing to get after it. And here's the question for you. Tyler O'Hare has run down Jeremy. These two guys, they're teammates, but they are fierce competitors. Do they run the tires off these heavier bikes, these Indians, and does that lighter weight of the KTM by Debrino come into play later in the race? Kind what happened yesterday yeah i think you start to see that with uh with the bravery on the brakes you know <laughs> yeah going into the corkscrew and being able to maneuver that bike that it's it's probably got i think 40 pounds less maybe 50 pounds less than the indian ftr 1200 but the indian r12 indian ftr 1200 makes a little bit more horsepower as well and you could see that coming over the top of the hill coming around Corey west um you know those harleys they got a little bit of development work to do to catch up to the indians yep. this is the indians really second year out here uh, in Super Hooligans on the Indian FTR 1200. And, um, you know, a little bit of development time makes a lot of difference. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just uh, ooh, look at Tyler O'Hare getting a really good run. Oh, Looks whoa. to the inside. And, uh, boy, we saw that between Cameron Bobier and Jake Gagne and Superbike in turn five a few times, getting that nose up underneath so close to the touch. But the more these guys battle, if they do start getting side by side, that's going to bring Debrino right back into it. And I think that's why Andy was absolutely a chunk at the bit to get through on Stefano and Corey because he wanted clear track once these guys started to really start race each other. Oh, that looked a that little looked wider wide. than normal even for Debrino. Yep. Yeah, he held on to it. He's, uh, that cost him some, some track time. You know, Tyler's definitely got a lot of motivation right now to keep this championship lead. Yes, he does. Um, I mean, see Jerry start to win a couple of these things. It's not gonna, it's not gonna put Tyler in the position he needs to be in. I think Tyler yesterday potentially had an issue with the bike, and that's what we saw as he dropped back. I believe he finished the sixth yesterday. Yes. Um, but today he's gonna take Fifth, actually, yeah. take advantage if he can, and um, he's not gonna let Jeremy get anywhere. Well, and of course, uh, you know, I hate to bring this up, but thinking about what happened to Tyler after that great pass for the lead in the corkscrew and baggers and then tipping it over in the last corner there, uh, he's going to want a, a, a win here just to get back into that mode and be able to get after it here. And uh, he is hounding Jeremy right now. What an incredible bagger race that was yesterday. Oh, it was crazy. Oh, wow. Just crazy. They get to do it again today. You know, I, the one thing we've had in these Super Hooligan races and the bagger races, we've had some phenomenal finishes and some phenomenal battles. Watching two baggers go side by side through the corkscrew yesterday was uh, had my heart racing. It did, it did. Watching Debrino work on the outside through the corkscrew yesterday. About the same thing. 
Mike Tyler right up on Jeremy up into turn six. That's a tricky place. You almost have to have that pass made before you get into turn six uh, because of just how angular and nasty it is up there. Uh, but look, at we're seeing it already from Tyler, that back end over that little rise when they bend to the right into the corkscrew, letting that back end hang around, and then he uses that to flick and transfer uh, into the corkscrew, and he's starting to dial that up right now, and uh, we're going to see what can happen here. Uh, you know, the thing for McWilliams, the guy has experienced about everything on a racetrack, and uh, he just knows how to deal with pressure, so will he? Uh, we'll see what he does. Last time by, the margin back to Debrino in third, 1.3 seconds let's see where it is right now uh, o'hara had set fast lap this time it's mcwilliams that comes through and that margin now up to two so these two thus far are drawing away at tyler working the outside line now does he try and carve up underneath that's what he wanted to do but that's the experience we were talking about of uh, mcwilliams going yeah i know that trick and just keeps it pinned to the inside leaves tyler nowhere to go I mean, Jerry knows this track so well. Yeah. I mean, he knows this place like the back of his hand. Even though he lives over in Europe, he's raced here plenty of times. And you can see that experience. Um, you know, but also, if I'm Tyler right now, I think I'm going to want to hang back a little bit, let Jeremy shred his tires up, take advantage of a little bit of cool down time. But, um, you know, both these guys running in the 29th, they're not running quite as fast as Jeremy ran in qualifying. Right. Um, I believe he qualified at a low 29. So 29.3. Yeah, 29.3. So, so. Um, he might have a little bit left in the bag as well. Up and into the corkscrew one more time. There you see Tyler hanging that back end out, tipping it down into the corkscrew. And this is where we see these guys they tended to run slightly different lines through here. That time it looked a lot more line astern, didn't it? Yeah, Tyler just, you know, takes a little bit of heat off if you can follow, follow your teammate around yep. a little bit. And Jeremy doesn't mind. No. You know, these guys are friends on and off the track, and uh, they're great teammates. Um, yeah, they've been they've been smashing bars for uh, <laughs> as long as I can remember them racing. I mean, last year, last year here they were smashing together um, in, in the main, and uh, they could do the same thing today without a doubt. Well, they get it. Like you said, they're good friends, and and uh, but when the visor goes down. Your friends are your competitors, and if you've got to bang bars a little bit uh, to get your, your, your pass done, you're going to do it. And normally the other rider understands that because they would do the exact same thing. They would. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's just part, part of the deal here right now. But they continue to draw away from Debrino now up by almost two and a half seconds uh, from O'Hara back to Debrino. And, oh! Here he comes, just just let go of the lever a little bit going into turn five, released the brake, got down to the inside, and up the hill he goes. Now we see, does Jeremy have anything to fight back with? You could see Tyler shake his head, too, like yep. he knew he had it. He's like, okay, I got this. Yep. I got this going in. You know, these s, &S Indian FTR 1200s are working really well, you can see, but, I mean, they're on very similar motorcycles. We're seeing them on, you know, probably making the same amount of horsepower. They're able to look at each other's data, and uh, so they're they're going to run real close as they as we've seen them do in the past. Yep, but as you see on the right side, Debrino, excuse me, McWilliams having none of it, knifed back through up into the corkscrew, tipped it down on the inside, and leads now down through turn 10 but Tyler good head of steam don't think he's close enough to try and do the deep dive into 11 here squaring it up trying to get that power down and get another run at it but uh, we're seeing it you bet McWilliams is up for a scrap you gotta wonder if Tyler Tyler's a little you know a little bit more reserved in turn 11 after yesterday's yep. bagger yeah. incident um, sometimes that type of stuff sticks with you and you could have all the confidence in the world and uh, you know kind of gets wiped out a little bit if you go down um, you know I think both these guys maybe got a little bit more pace in them here at the end we'll see well this time by that margin down to Debrino but only by a couple of tenths and we only have two laps to go so unlike yesterday unless some traffic plays a role and it did not there both of them getting through clean right now this is mano a mano between as you said those two Indian motorcycle progressive mission foods uh, Indians here having a whale of a battle once again and Tyler got through once McWilliams now knows that Tyler was really good through turn five and he'll do whatever he can to dissuade him there but we're coming up on a little bit more traffic rolling yes certainly I mean these are some of our air cool guys up in front and uh, it's gonna give these guys some room oh 
Oh, shoot. That was <laughs> tighter than it should have been. He did not know that Jeremy was covered, that Tyler was coming through, obviously, and uh, turned it in, didn't leave him the room that he probably should have. Yeah, that was a heart in the throat moment, and it was a bit costly in terms of track position for Tyler O'Hara. As uh, now, as they're coming down to pick up the white flag, he is going to have to throw down one magnificent lap here to get back up to Jeremy for the fight on this last lap. But I'll tell you what, if anybody can do it, Tyler O'Hara can. We have seen him uh, do stuff exactly like that. There it is, one lap to go here in our Super Hooligans. A main number two, tipping it in to the Andretti hairpin for the last time here for the uh, Mission Roland Sand Super Hooligans. Now up into that really interesting turn three. Yeah, Tyler ran a 30.9, so he lost seven tenths to Jeremy. Nah, that's a big that chunk. Incident, that's a bit of that's a big chunk, especially in that slower corner. And now Jeremy ducks underneath Brandon Quaid and gets him between himself and Tyler. There's Andy Debrino in third right now, just not able to stick with these guys at this stage uh, as he did yesterday. Uh, still, though, a very competitive uh, third place. Corey West, another couple of seconds, almost three seconds back and forth. Mesa doing a nice job. He could be in the top five here uh, at the end of this. How about Mallory? Dobson, Hannah Johnson, and uh, Selena Moreta. That seventh, eighth, and ninth roll, and the ladies are absolutely flying out. Oh, we got three Ducati monsters out there scrapping. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Uh, really close, too. It's a great battle here. Uh, meanwhile, down through that corkscrew one more time, Jeremy McWilliams. Well, I'll tell you, he has just been uh, absolutely uh, mega here this weekend in wanting to make a point about this super hooligans class and his ability to win here and uh, he has done it look at this one last he time has, to yeah. 11. Uh, unfortunate that tyler got involved with that lapper because we'd love to have seen a last lap uh, race to the line but jeremy mcwilliams taking the win tyler o'hare third and we have andy debrino sweeping it up on the ktm in, in third place yeah so what a run to the line by jeremy mcwilliams two in a row here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, and it is an Indian 1-2 and a team 1-2. Look at that, Tyler O'Hara coming up and saying, well done, my friend. And then Andy Debrino coming through again uh, with a podium finish here. Third, uh, Corey West, fourth, Stefano Mesa on the Energica in fifth, and uh, Mark Price in the sixth spot. Uh, but Jeremy McWilliams, you know, he travels a long way to get here, right, from Northern Ireland. He does. So uh, these are pretty fulfilling to be able to come through and do it. Here's Mark Price, another KTM. So two KTMs in the top six. So not bad at all. Indians, KTMs, Harleys, Energicas uh, in there as well. And we got three Ducatis. Yeah, that's been a fabulous battle here with Mallory Dobbs coming through, winning by less than a second uh, in the Ducati battle, if you will, seventh on the track. But Dobbs over Hannah Johnson and Shalina Moreta, those three were covered by about two seconds. What a scrap for them. Look at this. Ha, what a show. <laughs> Dual wheelies for Smoke the Indians. coming off the front tire. I would love to see that. <laughs> that's a show for the fans here. And uh, what a run they put in. Mission Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. A very happy Ulsterman right there getting the sweep. He had to wait a long time by his uh, perspective to get a win in the Super Hooligans uh, even after winning on the track at, uh, at the Ridge. Uh, but man, he made the point here this weekend. I can get it done. If you're going to do it, do it in style. You take both races, uh, pole position as well. So, you know, hell of a weekend for Jeremy McWilliams on the Indian FTR 1200, winning both the Mission Food Super Hooligan races. Congratulations to him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that race yesterday with Debrino was so close as the fans uh, absolutely enjoying the battle and going on here and Jeremy <laughs> celebrating a bit in victory circle. But, uh, you know, he had to deal with the Andy Debrino late in that one and hung on for the win. This one, he had such a pace going that Tyler had to take a bit of a risk going through a lapper up in the
the corkscrew, cost him a little bit, and uh, was able to come through it. Listen to that. Listen to that. Those audio technica mics picking up some serious celebration down there in uh, Victory Circle. Well deserved. Those two guys going one, two in Debrino. Another solid podium for KTM. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, after the last weekend at the Ridge getting DQ'd, it's got to feel so good to come oh, here yeah. and win both races and dominate, yeah. dominate the weekend. Um, and be able to beat Andy on the KTM with the scrap yesterday. It was a fine scrap yesterday. Outwitted his teammate today getting in be himself yeah, yeah. in between in a lap or so. You know, just race smart. Jeremy McWilliams, legendary rider. Real quick here before we get to the podiums. You've got to be thrilled with how quickly this Super Hooligans National Championship has just flatly blown up. It's taken off, you know? I mean, we're kind of running on the heels of the of the Bagger Series, um, but I think you can see you see the crowd out here today and see how many people have come out and filled Laguna Seca up with uh, custom motorcycles. you got a lot of V-Twins out here, and I think the Baggers and the Hooligan bikes are just bringing a new crowd into yeah. road racing, and that's what this is about. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And they put on a show. They sound great. They look great. Yeah. Everything about it's just fun. There's no question. And uh, then you get guys like McWilliams and O'Hare and Debrino, West Mesa, putting on such an incredible show as well, uh, that's going to go a long way. It's the only series in the world where you're going to see Indian KTM, Harley, and Erjika, certainly. Yeah. Ducati. Yep. You know, Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that's what makes this series special. And these guys are riding street bikes. These are not road race bikes. Well, they are now, but right. they didn't start out as street bikes. These started off as bikes you could buy off the showroom floor. And that's what makes bars, it. And that makes it cool. That makes it very cool. All right, Michael Hill, down there in the podium. Let's hear from these Warriors. Yeah, let's hear from the Warriors indeed, and uh, probably the biggest smile of the weekend, I think, for Jeremy McWilliams. Uh, two from two for uh, Jeremy, uh, and uh, that uh, that meant a lot to you. That was a great race, buddy. Well done. Uh, yeah, I want to say I came here this weekend so determined to make up, just, just to make amends and try to get some points on the table. And I kind of need to win-win if I put myself in with a chance of the championship. So I hope it wasn't too hard to move. There was no contact. It was a little bit. It's a little room, <laughs> and uh, we had to go for it because Tyler looked so strong when he came through that it was going to be impossible maybe to get past him anywhere else. But it's an Indian one too, and thanks to the guys, the change that we made really worked. And thanks to Olins and SNS, the whole crew for making this possible. Can't thank you not to be standing on top of the podium, the Lagoon of Seca, at my age. <laughs> hey, see, see, ladies and gents, he said that. It was him that said it today, not me. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy McWilliams gets the win. Yo, he's loving it, isn't he? Uh, let's come down to uh, Tyler equally with uh, a big, big smile. Tyler, a very popular uh, podium for the Indians at uh, 1 2. And uh, again, you, you made him work for that one. Yeah, it was. Uh, I got a little. I got a terrible start, so I kind of got shuffled back there. And. He was struggling in the first segment through two and three, and I could get a run on him going into five, and had something for him, and he put an amazing pass on me up into the corkscrew. Hats off to him, and he wanted that, and you know, this whole SNS cycle, Indian motorcycle team's working so hard, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. We scored some good points today. I wanna to thank all my sponsors, Mission Foods, 60 Helmets, Alpine Stars, everybody that's been helping this weekend, Progressive, just my wife, my family, everybody that's out here supporting us this weekend, all you amazing fans, and uh, we get ready for the bagger, and hats off to Debrino, and just uh, enjoying it. Ready for the next one. Yeah, we are as well. Uh, good job, uh, Tyler O'Hara in second place. Uh, let's move across to uh, Andy Debrino. And, uh, not quite the start that he made yesterday, but he dug deep and managed to salvage a podium. And uh, you didn't make it easy for yourself, buddy, but never the end, uh, nevertheless, rather, you got a good job in the end. Yeah, I was a bit flustered uh, on the start. I was fiddling with my clutch, trying to get it adjusted, and just didn't get a good jump, and then got my front chopped, almost crashed in the first turn. But I put my head down, and I knew Tyler and Jeremy were going to go for it. And I saw Jeremy out front. I'm like, man, I got to send it here. And had to get around Corey, made a pass, and he got me back. But then I uh, just let off the brake lever going into the corkscrew and just full sent it. Um, the bike was working amazing. I felt like I had the pace to run with those guys, but they broke the gap a little too soon, and I was just kind of stuck in no man's land. But got to give a huge shout out to my team for getting this KTM 890 Duke R working amazing, and uh, K Tech Suspension for hooking us up with some goods this weekend. EDR Performance, Dunlop, HJC, NJK Leathers, Motomaster, Motul, my girlfriend. My mom and dad, Adon, who came out and helped us, Boyd, all the fans. 
a lot of sponsors to thank. I don't want to take up too much time. I'm just stoked to be on the podium. It's uh, crazy to get to race these guys. Great job, and uh, let me come across now and speak to uh, the V-Twin Erkeld. Yeah, keep that applause going, the V-Twin Erkeld uh, winner once again, Hawk Mazzotta, two from two here at Laguna Seca. The smile says it all. Great job. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you so much to uh, Rowan Sands for this opportunity to race this beautiful motorcycle. Uh, that he trusts me with it. Um, thank you to Lloyd's Garage, Tim Sutherland, Lloyd Greer, those guys for funding this whole deal, and um, my family. Hey, buddy waiting at home I love you my wife and my little ones here and uh, the fans my hometown local boy put on the box we're six for six I I'm not good at math but I think we wrapped up the championship so super cool just thank you uh, for the opportunity Moto America thanks for doing this uh, for the hooligans this is really neat and uh, letting a lot of different guys come out here hopefully it keeps going so thank you yeah what about it to the fans down here you'd like it to keep going as well right I think that is a resounding yes Greg back to you yeah, absolutely, and why wouldn't you? It's absolutely incredible. Let's go and take a look at uh, some of the highlights uh, from this race. Uh, first of all, off the line, uh, watch there. There's a 62 Debrino. That front wheel comes up, cost him a little bit, and then uh, Corey West coming up around the outside. Good run there, and uh, you see, oh, that's where uh, Debrino and Tyler almost got together. Uh, that was uh, really, really close, and then the charge started here as Debrino was out front. It was Corey West, Tyler coming through underneath Mason coming after him now. Now he's coming up on Corey West, getting a great drive out of turn 11. Makes the pass down into turn one. Then he had work to do, and this is where West and Debrino went at it, hammer and tong, and finally Debrino able to get through, but up front, these guys were scrapping rolling. Absolutely. I think I saw a little smoke coming off the front of Corey West tire going into the course through, but uh, Tyler O'Hare, you know, putting it to Jeremy McWilliams and Jeremy not taking that. Yeah, it's a nice move up into the corkscrew, just uh, squeezed through and was able to get through and uh, put some serious pressure on. Then this really close moment, and uh, Tyler read it beautifully, but that 969, that uh, was a big wake-up call for Devin McLaughlin. He realized that, uh, that Jeremy was there. He just didn't know that Tyler was that close. And then here they come across the line with Williams sweeping the weekend. Tyler O'Hara, uh, a second-place finish. And uh, then we got the dual wheelie all the way up the hill into the course screen. I got to tell you, super hooligan, and, and let's throw baggers in here. How cool is it that you got a guy from Northern Ireland who is a massive fan of America's oldest motorcycle brand and the big boomer bikes from Indian? That's pretty cool. It's pretty good stuff, you know. We <laughs> got, really we got Grand Prix riders, and I mean, I, I actually raced Jeremy over in England at Brands Hatch yeah. um, on an XR1200 back in the day, and I, he's just been at it, and he's always been at the top where, wherever he's gone. So yeah. great to have him over here racing Super Hooligan. And how about that, folks? Looking at the results there, you can see. Uh, but I, just huge kudos to Mallory Dobbs, Hannah Johnson, and Shalina Moreta, 7th, 8th, and ninth. all three of them in the top 10 on the Ducati Hyper Motards uh, and uh, having really good battles. Uh, as well. Uh, that's just fabulous to see. So congratulations and certainly congratulations to Jeremy McWilliams. And he was talking about it. If he wants any any shot at the points, he needed to pick it up. Well, look at that. Hey, we're tied. Dead even between the teammates wow. on the, the Indian FDR 1200s. Uh, then Debrino only 16 back. Then West a little bit more work to do. Then Price Mason, Fong, Kreesap, and Mallory Dobbs there in the top nine in the points. So you were talking a little bit about the remaining schedule for the hooligans uh we're going to show it here because nobody should miss this yeah we're headed to coda next uh, um, it's going to be amazing another beautiful and iconic racetrack um one of my favorite tracks on the circuit i really enjoy riding there myself but you know these guys are going to get to go spin wheels around the same track as the fast guys exactly as moto gp absolutely you know? it's going to be amazing to see september 8th 9th and 10th circuit of the americas make sure and come if you can if you can't We'll have it all for you right here in Moto America Live Plus. There you go. The top three on the cool down lap for McWilliams. A lap of honor. Gear up to get fueled by mission and get ready to eat like a king.